the title of my short lecture, it's not really short, it's really short lecture, is Jeffrey Bhava, the man I knew as a friend, employer, teacher, tra travel companion. Knowing and interpreting the life of Jeffrey Bhava is in essence getting to know the man through the sum total of his architecture. Of the many ways in analyzing a work of an artist or an architect, many have limitations. Whatever is said and concluded of this analytical process, it is basically one-sided and is biased by my own personal experience through the prism of my own personal attitude and functional training. It is sad that there only is a handful of the original staff who worked with him in the 1960s, which covers this exhibition from 1960s to 1980s. There are only two who can claim to have known the man, his work, process, and his personal now that Lakhid Sisenaka is no more, it leaves Anwar Rathman Kushan and myself to interpret this. Both Vaki and Anwar, as far as I am aware, do not regularly write on architecture themes and its evolution in its early years. So I am, aware, so I am not aware of such publications. With the Bama Centenary celebration still unwinding, this is the most appropriate time. My view of Baba and his work as a man will differ from others who knew him intimately. I came to know Jesse Baba in several different roles, first as a friend, then as an employer, briefly as a teacher, and most interestingly as a traveling companion both in India and in Sri Lanka. Lucky and I were both members of the recently founding of the Young Artist Group in the 1960s, which had a studio space uh, allocated to the artists of this group. We knew each other from school days and regularly contributed to the work and exhibition of the Royal College Art Circle. Lucky is the one who introduced me to Mr. Bava, Ulrich Plesner, Barbara Sanzoni, and Nina Di Silva. So we formed a small group. The school had a Royal College, I mean, the school had a great reputation for producing artists and architects from the 1840s right through the next century. The well-known landscape watercolorists from Belfast, Ireland, and Runical taught painting to the likes of Van Dott and Kumaraswamy's father, Muthu Kumaraswamy. Quite a number of the 43 group were one time or the other students and teachers. Because of my, later on, because of my link with the stage and set design drama group at the Lionel went, I had the opportunity of designing sets for such plays like Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman, and Ego Betty's Queen and the Rebels. Largely due to the influence of Lucky Senaika, we all four of us met regularly and in the company of Jeffrey Ulrich and in the evening we used to gather at the Lionel Went Bar and Barbara Sanzoni was often there as well. Ulrich Pressner was the main inspire, who inspired me to study in Denmark and helped me all along my early career. Other than being merely an assistant architect in drafting, in the drafting office, Plessner's career is most remembered by the multiple role he played in the development and research, both in architecture and the arts. In October 2nd, 1960, Plessner single-handedly organized an exhibition of sculpture by the eminent, now disgraced Australian artist Donald Friend. The exhibition was unique 
friend was constrained to using only aluminium and gold leaf as material for his sculpture. He was essentially a painter and an artist and had never before attempted to try his hand as a sculptor. But with Ulrich's persuasion and enthusiasm, he turned out a series of wonderful works for this exhibition. Ulrich's role also included the design of the catalogue as well as the lighting for the display of sculptures. Actually, it was this exhibition that inspired me also to hold the exhibition and come under the influence of Donald Friend. Plessner's experiment in aluminium and his collaboration with Donald Friend and the outcome of sculptural forms took other avenues. Both Lucky Sennacher as a sculptor and I as an architect and painter and sculptor continued the legacy of the use of this material in an imaginary manner. I have done several sculptures uh, out of aluminium, beaten aluminium, and was, that was largely due to uh, the influence of uh, Donald Friend. Relocating the vernacular. As a research student in the Royal Academy, Ulrich undertook a major study in old Danish castles and heritage building. During his eight years stay in Sri Lanka, he attempted to strike a new approach. He tried to source the old elements and translate this into a new contemporary mode. Plessner strived to study the methods used in dealing in older buildings of the 17th and 18th century models to uncover solutions to problems faced in contemporary architectural design. As a teacher of design in the newly established School of Architecture at Kartugadda, he would demonstrate the recycling of these features from traditional buildings and their use of materials often inspire students by such examples. Plesner formed a team of four persons to measure these buildings, and that included Ulrich Plesner, Barbara Sansoni, Lucky Svenaker, and myself. And that's how I started learning how to do very good drafting and perspective drawings. Meanwhile, Plesner had picked three architecture students, including me, Firoz Stoksi, and Vasanta Ratna, to follow a course of architecture at his old alma mater, the highly prestigious Royal Danish Academy. The three students were admitted in, and, and to serve under the eminent architect Jorgen Bo, who was the head of the Department of Architecture at the Academy. A few weeks after, Anuradha Vibhushana joined us. Bo's speciality was the design of museum and art galleries, and in 1990, the Museum of Modern Art in New York also held a special exhibition in his honor. During those three years, Jeffrey Bava made two visits to see us in Copenhagen and stayed with us, took an active interest in our work at the academy and visited us during the lectures. In several aspects, Bava was exceptional. The, he was different from most other architects I worked with. Some of these were consciously carried out and others not. First and foremost, Bava realized early in his career to shed all those lessons he learned at the A school in London. These are my own views about Jeffrey's work, so I mean some people might have different views. His first buildings were cumbersome concrete structures bound by the Tropical School of Architecture rules drawn up by them, by Jane Drew, Maxwell Fry, and others. Baba, Baba was quick to grasp any idea from other younger architects as well. Meeting with Plesner led him to rethink many of his earlier designs and approaches, roofs, and of indigenous buildings, with shape, form, and size. He derived much from and learned the rudiments from master bosses who labored at the site, especially a man called 
uh, Shah Abdin, who was an excellent builder. In the 60s, the big time sensitive contractors were from the Muslim community and the Muslim contractors had built the National Museum and other important edifices. Although this does not seem obvious to many, Baba came to accept the fact that his work was carried out by a team process. Lucky Anura myself was uh, filtered our work right through he, us. Baba, like all of us, the four I mentioned, belong what is known as the T-square and the set-square generation. Drawing techniques, Lucky and I were obsessed with drawing techniques and when pencil gave away, we used pen and ink. Measured drawings with Ulrich took another dimension. Setting a building in the landscape was Jeffrey Baba's greatest preoccupation. At the time we were working in the 1960s, draconian measures brought about by the Bandanaika government meant that we had very little materials to work with, especially art materials. Other aspects needed to make a fine building, Baba, Baba realized was the interior. And so furniture, painting, sculpture, wall hanging, soft furnishing, all of which were required, he encouraged Ina de Silva, Barbara Sansoni, Lucky, and me to provide these tastefully. I supplied some of the furniture, murals, and sculptures where necessary. Okay. Oh God. I'm getting my nose built. Uh, Jeffrey Bava was meticulous about how he looked. He fine, his finely cut and laundered indigo blue shirt and pinstripe slacks and finely perforated off-white shoes were like a signature tune. He stuck to this uniform right throughout life, whether it was a presentation or an important celebratory event where he was one of the chief guests, he would sport this outfit. While we were suffocating in our suits, G Jeffrey Bava looked quite relaxed in his cotton get-up. Even his watch strap was specially selected and crafted. It was spindly, double-wired arms held the watch. It looked as if there was no strap, but the watch face was pasted to his wrist. Like many of his generations of artists and architects and writers, a cigarette was always dangling in his fingers. He used to smoke a brand as called Peacock with a colorful image of a peacock. He took a passionate interest in gardening at Lunuganga, his estate bungalow, where Lucky and I stayed regularly over the weekends, working with Jeffrey on his projects and other art works. He liked good food, travel, playing coal porter music, and an occasional arak. His, car for, his love for cars was legendary. And we assistants ended up by choosing cars to impress him. He even owned a Rolls Royce. He owned a Rolls Royce in Colombo, and he owned a Rolls Royce even in uh, Chennai, which he had purchased from a defunct Maharaja. There was never a dull moment in a drafting studio where we worked. In 1963, just an anecdote, there was a uh, uh, draftsman called Manfred Roberts, a clever, talented draftsman who caricatures worked beautifully and was with us in this office. He designed and drew a series of drawings of the appropriate coffins for the for every known leading architect in Colombo. The sketch he did of, for Jeffrey was absolutely spot on. Je Jeffrey lying prostrate in a coffin based on his Rolls Royce with his legs sticking out near the large headlights, a hole cut on the side door with his hands out and a cigarette dangling from his fingers. 
So, I think the last part. When we returned, it was a timely event. Both Benton Hotel and Serendip Hotel were nearing construction, but the projects needed numerous other inputs such as complete hotel interiors, including furniture, murals, paintings, sculptures, and other fittings. The hotel demanded crockery, cutlery, furniture, and bedspreads, uniforms for the staff, and other items. We designed all of these things for Jeffrey. Soon the Danish team of four turned the whole array of design for every aspect of the hotel requirement. We pers a problem in the design were faced with how such numbers could be manufactured to maintain the cost of items. We persuaded the state-owned businesses like the Ceramics Corporation and the Steel Corporation and Luxor State Handicrafts uh, to accept uh, and also find the market for the products. Jeffrey wholly supported this effort of these young designers. Now I come to the last part, which is the, this, the, the, the part that is necessary regarding this exhibition. The early years, history and materials and techniques employed in 1960 and 1970. The early years of, de of the details of the history of architecture practice from the 19th to pre-independent years are still to be researched. When Jeffrey joined Edwards Reed and Begg in 1952, he had to pay a certain amount of fees to learn his trade under Reed. This was practice which was dis discontinued. We are uncertain what materials they used to carry out the practice, but he, Edwards Reed and Begg, where he worked by, was by far the leading firm, in the architectural field and virtually all the buildings that we see now around us, the larger older buildings of the pre-independent period were designed by this firm. Town Hall, St. Joseph's College, Ladies College, the chapel, classrooms and several others were designed by this firm. The 1960s and 70s were turbulent years. Sri Lanka was in, a, in serious economic difficulty and foreign exchange was in short supply. So we had to design within this uh, short, you know, rather uh, impossible period. At that time, we were known as the blueprint generation. Here in Sri Lanka, we were still using drawing boards, T-squares, set squares to generate our drawings, a practice that could be traced back to the Renaissance times. These included measuring scales, made out of timber and later on by the 1970s these soon turned to plastic. Good textured paper, the main medium we used was in short supply. We used what was loosely termed as butter sheets, the cheapest available in the market that was partly translucent. I have brought all those things here and uh, after this short lecture or long lecture, you can have a look at it and make your comments. Often when drawings were specially called for the client on the site and contractors, we would revert to tracing paper. Originally, the instruments used for drawing was pencil and soon gave way to pen and ink. The latter was a laborious process and often likely to mess up the drawing. Special pens filled with ink known as rapidographs were unavailable. Once the drawing was executed and approved by the senior architect and civil engineer, the drawings, which were really negatives, were printed in a primitive machine with ammonia to assist us in the development using sensitized paper. The printing was carried out under sunlight, which was called solarization, the original term for blueprint, because of the color was absolutely blue and later on when we used it uh, the sensitized paper became different it's brown presently brown now after a few years lettering uh, on the drawings were done by hand and gave way to the use of stencils first the stencils are made of metal and then plastic 
Whatever the drawbacks, our drafting team produced excellent drawings, largely appreciated both by Jeffrey and Uri. Except the four of us the, in the staff, that is myself, Chaksi, Anuratni Bhushan and Chandraratna from Den who had their training in Denmark, the rest of the staff were largely draftsmen who learned their drafting of years of experience and copy. Reproducing plans and drawings from architecture went through a major revolution in the last century. Originally, they had to be last the wear and tear of use in construction sites. Before the digital age, large format printing did not arrive in Sri Lanka till 1980s. 200 years ago, linen was used for both for original drawings and hand tracing from original copies these records were made. Linen was used in high quality books and it looked like paper but it was thicker and looked shiny. The drawings on the surface were done by a quill pen. When I first started my architectural career in 1960, it was commonly used by the sewerage department for their drainage plans. Sometimes during the 1950s, we passed through the blueprint process. From then on, to the mania process, utilizing sensitized paper. So that's basically the technique that was used by Mr. Bhava to produce these drawings. And I will now uh, illustrate this by showing a few um, images, right? It also contains, you know, uh, the development of uh, the architectural drawings and so on. You know, architectural drawings was not something new. I mentioned the work of Andrew Nichol, and this is his drawing of the uh, Jetwana Ramaya, and that is Kirivehera in the back in Polonarwa. The next one, please. This is what you call a blueprint. This is an 1870 reproduction of a plan done in Washington for the Thomas J. Rusk Library. And this was done in the 1870s and it went on for about a, another 70, 80 years using this type of printing process. Next one, please. That's another blueprint and also using, you know, details that were taken to the site to explain to the contractor. Sorry, this is a, a a drawing by J.L.K. Van Dot, who was at Royal College in the 18, or which was the Colombo Academy in the 1880s, and this is the drawing at uh, the watercolor in uh, at the end of Main Street in the Peta. Okay, next one. Here's the letter from Jeffrey Bava to me, uh, outlining you know his uh, his support letter when I joined the. Uh, wanted to do this professional, you know, work with the Fulbright. Okay, next one. That's Jeffrey Bava just outside the Parthena in Greece and Athens. That's Ulrich Plesner up in Candy, close to one of Minet's building, still looking young and handsome. Yeah. Ulrich was known for his incredible roofs and he tried to convince Jeffrey Bava that what is essential in Sri Lanka is the roofs, and it's, the roofs are the predominant design feature in a building. This is Ulrich Plesner's famous church in, uh, for the Catholic Church in Jaffna, in, not in Jaffna, in Bandaravala. And it's a, it has a very Scandinavian look about it. It could have only been done by Plesner, I mean, you know, this sort of interior. So we now come to Edwards Reed and Beck, and this was in 1961-62, the office opened there, and you can see already Jeffrey had moved away from concrete and using stone for the base, coconut, you know, uh, columns and sloping roofs and small pools. That's where Jeffrey Bava did most of his work, a concrete slab, and he has his 
Cha on that side and Ulrich worked on the opposite side with a similar table and chair. This is a 1926 drawing by Edward Reed and Begg. I'm illustrating the evolution of drafting and this is the uh, Nuoralia Hill Club. And you can see, you know, on a single sheet of paper, all the details you need for a building are on this. Now we, even to accomplish a simple house, we have to send about 50 to 100 drawings to build it. Because most of the work at that time was done at site and very little drawing work. You know, the drawing was just an aid to building. That's Donald Friend working in 19... 61 or 62 at Bauer and Company on the walls of bars which U Ulrich Presner uh, got him a contract to do this lovely mural which is about 10 feet by 8 feet. It's a bazaar. In there. That too is uh, Donald Friend's drawing which Ulrich instigated having him to design it and do a gold leaf painting in, in the McKinnon's boardroom. What is remarkable about this painting is the topographical view, though Friend was an artist, if you carefully look at that, the inside of the fort, there are about 50 to 60 buildings and you can identify very clearly almost 40 of those buildings starting from the lighthouse in the back to the clock tower in the front, and the mosque, and the Dutch Reformed Church, and the Grand Hotel, and all the other smaller buildings, which are some of which are still there. It shows uh, a sense of tremendous architectural knowledge of how to incorporate it in your work. This is a sketch by uh, the road to Bevis's brief, Jeffrey Bava's brother's garden, and this is by Donald Friend. And a few images afterwards, you can see his influence. He was he heavily heavily influenced his technique of ink drawing, pen and ink drawing on us. And this is Lunuganga. That's a, a section of Lunuganga. And through the this is Jeffrey's own house in uh, off Bagatale Road and that's the plan and elevation and sections and uh, that's one of the gold leaf aluminium panels which I did the door for Jeffrey Bava's lounge upstairs on the first floor. So we come back to drawings again and drafting and this is Lucky Senaike in 1984 and Lucky, myself and Barbara somehow got a a lot of inspiration from Ulrich and these are one of the many buildings we measured in our travels through Sri Lanka documenting old buildings which was published later by Barbara under the title Viharas and Verandas. That's Lucky Senaika's uh, design for the 100 rupee note, the fauna and flora series which were done in our, in our residence in Green Path and these were showing endemic animals, birds, trees, snakes, reptiles by Lucky. And re later they were printed and they were only released for a few years and they were withdrawn. Well, that is Lucky's drawing for Lunuganga, Jeffrey's estate. And you can see the influence of the pen and ink technique which was deployed by Donald Friend, you know, the sketching technique. This is Barbara Sansoni at uh, Gaul, at the famous Walau, just outside Gaul, the uh, Abasinga Walau, I think. And Barbara was a housewife, I mean, in her 30s, and Ulrich somehow inspired her and got her to do all this incredible perspective drawings by teaching her how to, you know, get all these uh, sense of scale and technical this thing of doing 
tiles and plants. If you notice, we already started drawing, like that's the traveler's palm, that's plumeria, the temple flower, and that's margosa. So all the plants had their characteristic leaves and we, we all started drawing in the same way that Donald Friend would have done doing his drawings because in many of his paintings you can identify the trees and the birds and the buildings as well. Okay, that's the interior of one of the Wallawas in, in, uh, in Jaya Singer's Wallawa, also by Barbara. This is an elevational view of Kalpitiya Fort, which Lucky and I and Barbara and Ulrich measured and it was done on a very large sheet of paper. That's another very clever artist we had, uh, Narasingham, and his view of Serendip Hotel. He was an artist as well as a draftsman, and he did some very beautiful paintings. He emigrated back to South India where he was from. Okay. This is Ina de Silva's house, the interior, when it was in Alfred Place, where we started working in Batik and in 1963 I started in 62, 63 I started working with her and I did a lot of textiles under her care and under her instructions, okay? That's one of the large nine-foot batiks that I did uh, mainly guided by her but all the waxing was done by me and I did a series of uh, batiks for various institutions at that time. This is Lucky Sen, sorry, the Lucky Sen Naika's pen and ink drawing of the five rupee note, right, on the reverse side. And his, you see this fine line technique he used on using that quill pen, which, you know, what we call hatchering, you know, sketching very fast by drawing on top of one line on top of each other, yeah? That's Bentura Beach Hotel in 19, somewhere in the 1970s. That's me, my wife and my sister-in-law and in 1970, the first painting was up and about, I did about eight bird paintings in the lounge and subsequently when Chanada Aswatha uh, when they restarted the project and rebuilt it, I redid them all again in about two years ago. This is a nail sculpture. This, this is remarkable because at that time I told you there was a drought and we didn't have any materials. And when I used to complain to Jeffrey, Jeffrey said, ah, don't worry, I'll get the contractor to get you a piece of timber. And there are lots of nails all around. Why don't you just do a sun? So this whole nail sculpture, which is twice the size of this, or one and a half times the size of this, was made out of copper nails, brass nails, lead nails, steel nails, and iron nails. So you get a fine texture on the surface. Okay, next one. Please. That's Bali. Uh, we did a huge number of drawings for Jeffrey Baba for in Bali. Uh, which Donald Friend was the uh, client. That's one of my uh, large uh, murals for Serendib Hotel. It's the fort, uh, imaginary fort along the coastal Sri Lanka. Here, right on the wall, we have d I've done this drawing. The, the, the paints were unavailable, so we use Samara. That's that earth paint which you crush and mix with PVC and gold leaf and uh, black felt pen. That's also from the Serendip Hotel period, 1972-73. The blue there is Robin blue. We mix Robin blue with water and PVC and we painted. So there was very little paints available at that time. Okay. We are now back in India and this is the Connemara Hotel and contrary to everyone's expect, you know, general attitude approach to Jeffrey Bava. He really did, sometimes he did models to understand a building and this was the extension to the Connemara Hotel and we got an Indian young architect to do the models. Okay. 
This is the interior of one of the rooms. Uh, can you go back? Yeah, and this was a canopy, and on with a beautiful silk hanging over it, and a beautiful sculpture on the side, and quite mm -hmm. amount of uh, antique in, in Indian furniture, colonial okay. furniture. Okay, that's called a kalamkari. It's a long lamp which is hung on the gopurams that are dragged across the city during whale festival, and we use that as for lighting the corridors. That's a gold leaf sculpture of me in timber, which was in several parts, 16 square parts, and that was to be fixed on the wall and gold leafed. It's a sort of modernish piece of work, yeah. This is to illustrate the influence we had when we came back in 1969. We brought back a lot of stuff from the Scandinavia, from Finland, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, cutlery, crockery, jewelry, and that is Anuraratna Vibhushana's uh, approach to doing the lift doors, which is in brass and copper, based on that famous uh, Finnish dress designer called Mari Meko, who used to do these wonderful drawings. And this is one of the jackets which I bought in Finland, designed by a man called Timo Sarpaneva. Okay, next one. These were some of the articles that we brought back from Denmark, and we, that's a sugar bowl, and that's two ceramic tea, uh, you know, pots, and we got the Ceramics Corporation to copy these, and these were used at the Serendi. I don't know where they are now, but they were beautifully done and copied. And this is a lamp which was designed by Ulrich Plesner's father-in-law and Carl Clint, who was a brilliant architect himself and who started the design school in Copenhagen. Stepfather. Huh? Stepfather. Stepfather, sorry. Yeah, okay. That's a drawing, pen and ink drawing by me of uh, a mixed drawing of Habarana, what it should look like or contained in my mind. Okay, next one. That's one of the chalets in the double chalet and the single story chalet and uh, a view of Habarana, yeah. The lodge. That's another sketch of the lodge. This is to, just to show you, I still do this. This was done about three years ago. These are all pen and ink techniques, you know, use fine pen and sketches. Because it's large, it looks as if it's very thick, but it's really very fine sketches. Okay, that's Mr. Bhava explaining to our family. That's my son, myself in the center, my daughter, and that's Dilini. And he's showing the 1973 list of birds which Lucky and I did, which is in the visitor's book, of his visitor's book with sketches of birds of Lunuganga. That's the interior of my house with the batik on the wall and right next to it is the sketch of the batik itself and these are two clint lamps and the rest are all old maps of Sri Lanka, 18th century maps and on the, there are two wooden columns on the, on the right in the back are this top plate, this thing that you get in Gaul, taken from an old door frame in Gaul, okay. That's a, another view of Bhava's lounge doors. Mr. Bhava himself, Sannadas Vatta, Anjalendra and myself having a conference about nothing. <laughs> this is the type of drawing board that we did all our drawings, all these drawings, you know, you see of Barbara's drawings and all these drawings that you come and see here were all done with these two plus this gadget which is known as a set square. This was used to do all the scale down measurements. So you have to use a scale and if, you, if it's a building or like a house, you have to draw it on a particular scale and then you have to enlarge it and draw, you know, whatever you have to, you know, sketch, right? And this box has all the crazy stuff that we used you know, 
to draw. This was used, this is a pencil holder, when your pencil gets very short, you put it into this and start sketching or you can sketch it, or use it very useful to sketch on the walls, right? These are also dividers, they are the same thing as this, they are out of stainless steel so that they don't get rusty, right? These are special compasses which are graduated and controlled at the center for very fine scale drawings, right? This is the same thing, but you have to put ink here and then you can draw it, uh, sketch it or you can put a pencil point here or ink on this side. You can use it for pencil or for ink. These are the stencils that we use to do all our lettering, you know. So, that's the A and that's I. So, if you have Kanagaratna or Fernando or whatever, you just put these letters down and assemble it and draw. And this was originally made in metal. This is quite old and later made out of plastic, right? Right. So this is colored ink which was used by Donald Friend very often. A lot of his paintings of Ceylon, Sri Lanka was used, used this colored ink and I used to use it a lot in my drawings for Jeffrey. That's a brush. After you finish your work, you take your dust off the drawing, okay? This came in years after this. It was called Letra Set. It's a plasticized thing in the 1970s and 80s. And like water pictures, you can transfer the letters by scratching on them. It was used for some time and then it went out of vogue with the coming of digital, right? That's the instrument that Lucky and I use for about eight years. Fine drawing, absolutely. It comes in a complete set of, uh, you know, so many. Uh, these are stencils used for drawing toilets and wash basins and so on. This was also originally in metal, then they came out in plastic. These are two techniques which we used. This is called a lino, where you dig into it, it's rubberized, and you apply, uh, you know, ink on it, and you press it, and it comes out as a beautiful print. And we used this for some of the drawings to make it, you know, to make it special, the, you know, the north points or special, you know, textures, we used to do that, you know. And this is the same as that, but this is out of metal. The, the original engraving is metal, and it's, you apply la suit on it, and you engrave it with a fine needle, and put it into acid, and you print it, right? From something like 1350 till about 1700, it was this that they used, but it was out, out of wood, that they used for printing books. All the older Bibles and, you know, a lot of the books that were in Europe were printed out of that. And it was made out of wooden blocks like this, huge wooden blocks, the lettering and so on. Caxton and people, they printed it on that. After about 1650, they started using metal and a lot of the architectural drawings which have lasted for years in the Vatican City or in the Italian museums and French museums, they used metal and they pressed it on the, you know, through a press and they printed it on it. And subsequently only that they started, printing was started, large scale printing was started in 1850 and that became uh, uh, the way in which you did, you know, large scale prints. These are some of the drawings which I did, which I showed you, right? And this is the book that we did for Jeffrey Bhava. You must be having a copy no? of Bali. And we read, we designed it in the office and got it done. And a lot of the drawings were done by Lucky and me and 
Anura. And it has a complete, you know, can I hand this? You know, it was a brochure giving all the layout of and all the section and beautifully done of Bali. And that's Lucky's drawing of the Bali, uh, you know, the flora. So, you know, it was, it was really fantastic that you, we worked under enormous pressure, four or five of us, but we produced this incredible amount of work, you know, and I think what is sad is with the arrival of digital, you know, techniques, a lot of this has completely vanished. So no longer is it personalized and it's very, very different from what the sort of things that we were doing. And because of Jeffrey's interest, he kept pressurizing us to do these things, you know. And he, he was a difficult person to work with uh, in a certain sense, but he gave you sufficient room and space to develop. And he used to give uh, me a lot of uh, clients and so on so that I could continue to work with, you know. Uh, what he also said is that nobody is documenting I mean, I try to document it myself, but it's very, very difficult to do because unless you have, like in Europe, access to, you know, research material, you know, all these techniques that we did have got completely vanished and nobody has even bothered to, you know, either demonstrate or, uh, you know, write about it, how these drawings were done, what an enormous amount of time went into it. And uh, I mean, they just looked like anything else on paper, but they really, they, it needed an enormous amount of skill. And uh, we were lucky to have been there at the time when all these people were there, like Ulrich Plesner and Jeffrey Bava, who encouraged you and got you working, you know. So, I don't know whether uh, someone, I think some of the students in the architecture school should sit down and try to, you know, uh, do the history of uh, drawings that were done between the public works department under the British and later on under us and all the, you know, the architectural you know, the quality of the work that was done, the drawings, especially the drawings and sketches and so on.